Hello, welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sebbing. Today is a stash with Stephanie Day, which is my favorite time of the month because we come out with a brand new fat quarter friendly pattern inspired by this month's stash with Stephanie fabric line that we featured in our subscription club. If you haven't joined stash with Stephanie or you're new here and you don't know what it is, every month we send out 12 fat quarters for the price of 10, $29.99 a month plus shipping to our subscribers. And then we create a pattern that's been inspired by those fabrics that you uses them to their full potential. So that's what this video is about. We're gonna do the tutorial for it. They also get special discounts that they can use to get additional fabrics if they have another project in mind or finishing kits so they can get anything else they need in order to finish the quilt. So this month's design is super pretty. I'm very excited about it. We are reusing a block that we did about a year and a half ago for a quilt. And what I love about this one, it was called bling at the time, is it's gonna be a completely different setting. So even though the diamond that is going to make up this block we've done before, when we get it all together, it's going to look completely and totally different. This pattern, by the way, I realized I didn't say the name, is called Sparkle because it looks like one big sparkly star. So I hope you guys really enjoy it and let's check it out. All right, so let's take a peek at this month's fabric collection and then we'll get in on the tutorial. And by the way, we will have kits for this while supplies last. We will have patterns pretty much forever. And we have this fabric also while supplies last. The best way to make sure that you get fabric when you like a project like this is to join the club because we've already shipped this out to our members. They get first dibs on getting fabric so they can finish the quilt if they want to make it bigger and, and go from there. And then whatever is left over, you guys get to check out if you are not a member. So the best way is to join and you can do all that over at shop.quiltadosimus.com. All right, so this month we are working with Thistle Patch from Clothworks. And we talked about this two months ago that most fabric, while digital printing is becoming more commonplace, most fabric is still printed by screen printing. Um, and so to do that, to keep it cost effective, because it's a very expensive process, what they do is they you reuse the screens for different colorways because it's very much like screen printing a t-shirt. You print up different screens, you gotta line them up just so, and then you push the pigments through to create the design. So the creating of those screens is one of the most expensive parts of printing fabric. So to, if they can reuse it, like we have hearts here, here and here, then they're able to bring that cost down, make it more economical to print fabric. But what that does is it means you often end up with a lot of different, like, looks where you have like here we have our grays we've got our purples we have our greens and then you have your light fabrics now there are two extra prints that are not including in this swirl one of them is a really light background that we're going to be using as the background for our quilt and then one of them makes a great binding so we held that out for that but what it makes it challenging for when you want to use an entire line in a quilt is you got to figure out what you're going to do with these light prints. Because if you have them next to your background, they're just going to get lost and then you can't see your block design and all that hard work is for nothing. So that's why it's kind of fun to be part of this club because I've already thought about that and have designed the quilt with that in mind. But if you've got a block like this at home, what you need to do is you need to find a quilt pattern that's fat quarter friendly that you uses light, medium, and dark fabrics. That way you know where things are supposed to go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use these lightest fabrics in the center of our block, and then we're gonna save the darker and the medium value prints for the outsides because then those will contrast real nicely with the background. It'll look beautiful. Our block will look as good as it should, and it won't get lost because we have too much of this that won't contrast with the background. All right, I'm gonna get started cutting. And and we are using an equilateral triangle ruler for this quilt. Um, it is very important that you get the clear view triangle ruler or, at least, or any one that has all three points. It's very important that you have the one with the pointy tip. There are some that have flat tops. Those will not work. You will not get the same amount from the strips as we are getting and your quilt will end up a different size and you may not fit together correctly when you're trying to sew your diamonds together. 
So you don't want that. Um, there are reasons why people do it that way, but we always use the pointy one and I recommend the clear U triangle ruler. It makes it look like it's a lot more challenging than it is when you use 60 degree diamonds, but it is just stunning and, and it is actually pretty easy once you get the hang of it and we're gonna cover all those tips in today's video. Let's get started. So cutting with an equilateral triangle ruler is actually pretty simple, but it's just a little different than what you're used to. So I'm gonna show you how to cut some diamonds and some triangles. So first I'm gonna move all the way down to where the selvage end starts. So I wanna use as much of this as possible. And I'm lining up the measurement that this is supposed to be cut to uh, with the bottom. And then the very tip is even with the top of that strip. So I'm gonna go ahead and for the first one, just cut off that edge. I'm gonna go ahead and let that go. Now, if I'm doing a diamond, which I am here, I'm just gonna go ahead and give that ruler a 180 degree flip. And I am moving it over. I've got, once again, that line lined up now with the top. And my tip is now lined up with the bottom of that strip. And then the left edge is even with that top tip of where I just cut. So once I'm happy with where everything is, I'm just gonna go ahead and give that a cut. Whoops, missed the point there. All right, so now for all the rest of these that are diamonds, I don't have to do any flipping of the ruler. I can just grab it, move it down, and give it another cut. Now for some of these, you're gonna be cutting triangles from this. I'm gonna show you how to do that. So what you're gonna do if you have to do a triangle is you just have to flip it around every single time. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip that over. And I'm gonna get everything lined up with the left edge. And then the bottom edge is still even with the edge of that strip. And then my top tip is going right up to the top there. And I'm gonna go ahead and give that a trim. Now you wanna make sure that you have a very pointy tip here. If you don't have a pointy tip, then that changes the dimensions. And you might have trouble getting everything to fit together properly later. It might be a little wonky and have some, you know, they call them B cups, like a bra. If it's poke it up, we don't want any of those. We want it to be nice and flat. So then for the rest of these, I would just keep flipping it around like that. Now for some of these, you have to do what's called a half equilateral triangle. So let's say we've gotten all the way to the end of our strip here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the ruler to the side and I'm just going to line up the any one of these center lines up with, in this case, the top tip. And then I'm lining up that quarter inch even with the bottom there. So I'm gonna give that a little trim. And I'm able now to have my half equilateral triangle. So in this case, this little bit that is straight over here, that's your seam allowance. So that's what is gonna be caught up in your binding. In this case, um, other quilts, you might be sewing that to something else, but this will be caught up in the binding for that one. Now, if you have to do more of those, as you do in this case, what you're gonna do, is you're gonna line up again with the bottom. And then on this ruler, I'll give you a little close up. We've got two lines here. So we've got our center line and then there's a lighter line on either side. So we're gonna line it up in this case with this line here and that'll give us our center plus a quarter inch for our seam allowance. So I'm getting that all nice and lined up. I've got the bottom lined up here. The tip is still at the top, but I'm lining up the edge with that line that's a little bit lighter, just to the left of center. That way I can have my seam allowance in there. All right, so I've cut three of these. You can see they're all going in the same direction. Now we want them to be going in opposite directions so that way we have them for the mirror image on both sides. The easiest way to do that is just to layer two together. So normally we're gonna pretend that this is two strips. So if you lay them out, so that way you instead have your wrong sides together, just like that. So now what I do, if I come over and get this set up like that, and I've still got it going just to the side, just like before, then give it a little trim here. And now I've got mirror image, so I'll easily have one for both sides of my row. So that's what I do when I'm cutting for that. I either am going to layer them so that they're right sides or wrong sides together, or I'm gonna leave everything folded over. Um, when you're doing the big triangles for the outside, you do need to unfold it 
and in some cases you're gonna keep it together. So just pay close attention to your cutting instructions because we make sure to tell you when to do what to make that less confusing, but that's your process for cutting all the different types of units that you need for this quilt. It actually is really fast because once we do this, we're already sewing our block together so it goes pretty quickly. So I got a little excited when I was sewing my quilt together and I've already sewn these into a set of two so you can see what they look like when they come together. I'm gonna show you how to sew your diamonds together. It looks a little weird, but I promise it works out really well when you are doing this uh, at home. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna move these guys to the side. We're just gonna start with two. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip these guys right sides together and you might be tempted to line up you point to point like that. And if you sew like this, it is not going to be a nice straight line like these. You've got to offset them a little bit. So what you're gonna do is you're going to lay it down and you're gonna have points sticking out just a smidge on either side. Now, this is the first time you're doing it and you're not quite sure how far they should be sticking out. I'm gonna show you a really easy way to check until you can start to eyeball it on your own. So ideally, where this little valley is, where your points meet, that should be about a quarter inch away from the edge. So when you're sewing, your needle should come in right through here and come out right through there. Now, eventually you'll be able to eyeball that really easily. If you're not so sure and you need something to be a guide when you get started, just take your ruler and line up the quarter inch with the top there. And then you're never gonna see this, so a mechanical pencil's fine, or I'm using a friction gel pen. You wanna make a mark. Now make sure that you are leaning that pen in because if you have it straight up and down or to the side, your mark isn't gonna actually be at a quarter inch. It's gonna be a little bit more and then things might not fit together so well. So make sure that that is leaning in and that your point of whatever you're using is in direct contact with your ruler. So now when I go to line this back up, that's a really good guide to show me where I should be starting and stopping. So I can see right here that if I put it right there, that this dot is right where that little valley is and same on this side. So I need to be sewing from here to here. If you want, you can pin that. I'm just gonna sew it straight down. So whenever I'm sewing, I just line my guys up and then I just bring it right over the sewing machine and just sewing a regular quarter inch stitch. I'm gonna line that up and I'm gonna start sewing down. Now, a lot of times what I do is I'll get started just like that, and then I'm just going to give it just a little, make sure I'm lined up nicely down here, and I'll hold it in place with my pointer finger. And then when I get to the point where I can't hold that anymore because it's gonna go under the foot, I just move my finger to the side, and that helps me maintain a nice quarter inch stitch all the way down. Now, if you were doing this at home, you wouldn't want to do one block at a time like I'm doing. You're going to want to stack them all up and then you're going to want to sew a bunch of them all at one time. I did the entire quilt except for the one block that I need to do on camera here. It was very efficient because then you can sew them all, then you can press them all. But if this is your first time do working with the 60 degree diamonds and triangles, might be a good idea to make one for practice just so you can figure out what's working and what isn't, make your adjustments, and then go ahead and make the rest. So with 60 degree triangles, I always press open. I press open most of the time, but especially with these because you can get really flat joins and really great points this way. So you just kind of open it up with your fingers ahead of the seam and then just put the tip of your iron straight down there. Then I'm gonna flip it over and just press from the other side as well. So we're looking pretty good here. I've gotta go ahead and join these and then I have to join those. I'm gonna show you what that looks like just because like I said, it is a little weird because they don't like stack straight up on top of each other like squares and rectangles. They are gonna be going in opposite directions and you want that to happen because you can see once we unfold that, that's looking like a straight line. So we're gonna go ahead and flip those right sides together and we're gonna flip these right sides together. And if you wanted to, you can mark all of those if you are feeling like that's what you need to do to have really accurate pieces. Once you've done it, and I've done thousands of these, you don't need to do that after you kind of get the hang of it and you know what a quarter inch is. You can absolutely eyeball that and just run it through like I'm about to do.
So you can see it pretty well on this one. You can see that I've stitched right in to where that little point is. And you can see it on this side as well, maybe a little better on this side. That's pretty light. But you can see that that thread is sticking right out where that little valley is. So as long as your needle is coming right in where these guys come together, then you know you're gonna be all right and everything is gonna turn out just fine. So when I open this up, we can see we've got a nice straight line there and it is looking pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and press these open and then we're ready to complete our block super fast. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys this on the pressing mat. I think it'll show up a little better. So when I pin, it's gonna be the same thing. We're gonna flip everything right sides together and it's still gonna be going in opposite directions. We want that every single time we're working with 60 degree triangles or diamonds. Now here's where it gets a little different. We're gonna to wanna to pin with two pins here. So what I'm gonna do is first I'm gonna go ahead and put a pin in right in the middle of that seam allowance, about a quarter inch away from the edge there. And you can mark that if you want to, or you can eyeball it like I'm gonna do here. Then about a quarter inch away from this edge, I'm gonna do the exact same thing, just I'm going from the right side this time. Then I'm going to line those up as best I can. And if you have eyeballed it at the same point, then your edges should be in line with each other. Now I'm holding this so that the pin is going straight up and down. And I'm gonna go ahead and take a second pin here and I'm going to pin across. Be careful not to get your fingers when you do this. And then I'm able to take out this pin. So what this does is this makes sure, your first pin, make sure that your seams are right on top of each other so that we have a nice great point when we join these together. And if I were to rock that, what it would do is it would move the top one forward and the bottom fabric back toward me and they would no longer be in alignment. We wouldn't have that great join anymore. So this is a really great way to do it and avoid that. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and stitch down the side here. And one other thing to note is in this case it lines up pretty good where I've got my dog ears right on top of each other that isn't always the case so if they are not right on top of each other no big deal you haven't done anything wrong you want to make sure that your points are going to be intersecting at the same point not so much caring about what's going on the inside because nobody is going to see that all right so if you wanted to you could pin your ends again I don't I'll just line this up and put it in to sew we're gonna go ahead and get started going down and then one thing you have to be careful of, this tripped me up a couple times when I was working on it, is sometimes when you go over the lip right here, it will flip your seams going the wrong way. So you wanna make sure and kind of lift up. And then I just put a finger down on here to help make sure that everything stays nice and flat. All right, so now I've sewn as close as I can to that pin without going beyond it. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that. Then I'm gonna go ahead and get everything lined up. I wanna make sure it's nice and taut. You don't wanna pull on it, but do make sure it's nice and taut. And then that's a good stopping point when you reach your second seam. Now I'm gonna line up at the bottom, make sure it looks like it's about where it should be, and it does. And I'm gonna sew the rest of the way down. Pause and move my finger. And we're good to go. So a lot of times sewing on the bias intimidates people because it can stretch on you, but that can actually work in your favor too. So if you have one that's just a little too short, you can make it work and it won't, you can definitely ease that fabric in and it won't be a big deal. I'm gonna press this seam open as well. I'm gonna go ahead and get it started. And for this one, I'm not sliding it down. I'm making sure I'm lifting and I'm pressing because I don't wanna press any of these seams going in the wrong direction. So I'm just kind of pressing that open ahead to help make the job easier for the iron and then move it working my way down. All right, so I've got that good. I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over, give it a press from this side as well. So with this one, when I was designing, I originally was gonna have these form like a star point with a bunch of them all together like that. But then I realized that would be a, a huge quilt and a whole lot of background. So what I ended up doing was doing a medallion star design, which looks a lot harder than it is. Essentially, you're gonna sew together six wedges and then you're going to join those wedges in order to have three on each half. So I'm gonna show you how to do that here. First, I'm gonna show you how to join one row. So some of the rows are pretty easy. They're just two big ones that are kind of come together like this. So they're just bigger diamonds that are getting sewn together. But others are a little bit more uh, complicated. Uh, not complicated, they're not hard. They just look a little different than what you're used to sewing. So you can see I've got a diamond here and then I've got a triangle and then I've got two half triangles. So the first thing I'm gonna do is sew these two half triangles together. I'm just gonna layer those right sides together and I'm just gonna sew down the side. 
Now I really like to speed things up. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to sew my background triangle to my piece. And you can see that this stands out really well against this, but if I were to put it against it, not so much. And that's why we designed it to have the lighter ones and a few of the mediums in this big diamond so that this stands out and their star can really, really look beautiful. So to get those guys lined up, your points are going to match up. And what I like to do is actually start with that point. So I get that first part started and then I just kind of line it up as I go. I'm not a huge fan of pinning unless it's absolutely necessary. All right, now that I've hit that second seam, what I can do is I can line this up and I can get it to where I'm gonna be coming out in that little valley where I want it to be. Now for this one, there's just one little trick you need to know beyond what we were doing earlier, and that is we're gonna do that double pin again. So I'm gonna go ahead and line up at the top and at the bottom and pin across. Now I don't really pin my ends, I'll just get those lined up as I put them in my sewing machine. But you certainly can if that makes you feel more comfortable. And so the rest of the way. Now sometimes when you're doing this, you can just start sewing them right next to each other. But in this case, we've got some overlapping seams that we just sewed. So I'm gonna have to press them before I can do any more sewing. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up that seam. Put the iron straight down it for this one because I've got no seams to worry about. Press it flat from this side as well. Now, if I wanted to, I could just line up this piece with this one and start sewing because this seam is not going to overlap with anything. For here, um, it, it could, so I, I go in ahead and did that one already. So what I'm gonna do here is get these guys nice and lined up and then I'll press everything at the end. so we can see a nice row is forming here. I'm gonna go ahead and add this last bit. This is what makes up the corner of the quilt. So you can see that it's going to be a continuous line because this will just continue out and then that will be the corner. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip that and this is where those dog ears can be very helpful because I can just line up the dog ear from the seam allowance right with the point of the triangle below. So you can see now I've got my little point right here. I'm going to align the tip here with that point. So that, that flat part and the point are at the same spot. So now I'm gonna give this a press and then my row is done and I'm ready to start joining it into the wedge. We got some good joins. I'm pretty happy with those. This one's off just a smidge, but once it's quilted, you won't be able to tell that. All right, so I've got my row and then I have the shorter row that goes on it. So it's a little easier for you guys to see on camera. And what you're gonna do is they just kind of get either progressively smaller or progressively wider, depending on which way you're going in the wedge and which wedge you're working on. Um, there are three distinct wedges. They're all laid out clearly in the layout diagram. So you just have to get them into rows like this. And then we're gonna flip them right sides together. We're gonna do that double pinning again as we go and join these. And then we'll just stitch down and it's just, it's just like the diamonds we've been doing, just it's a little bit bigger. Now the difference here is you've got two points to pin. You have where the block ends and you also have where the little diamond meets the big diamond that you're gonna be looking out for.
All right, I'm gonna go ahead and give this a press. And just like everything else we've been doing, we're gonna open that up with our fingertips first. Then we're gonna go after with the iron, making sure you're lifting and pressing so that we don't get any of these seams going the wrong way. All right, so my wedge is looking pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and join this to complete my wedge. And then I'll show you how to join two of the wedges together so you can get an idea of how that goes and see that really is no big deal at all. Even though this looks super complicated, we have zero Y seams and it goes super fast and is pretty, pretty good. Uh, easy, fast quilt. I did this one in about two weeks and it's not like I have two weeks to work straight. You know, I, I do way more than just film these video tutorials. We run a whole business. I've got a kid who we are homeschooling because of the pandemic. I have a nine month old who is still nursing every two and a half, three hours all day and night. So I get a lot going on and we're still able to get this done pretty quickly. So this is a great fast project. All right, so this next part is gonna be a little challenging to show in my tiny little studio that I'm in right now. So I have two wedges sewn together here. This is my center wedge from here to where my hand is. And then I've got my other wedge already sewn to it. I'm gonna show you how this pins together so you can see how it goes together. But essentially you have a center wedge that is going to be in the center of your side. And then you have two corner wedges that are the corners of your quilt. And you're gonna do that for both sides of your quilt. And then you sew it straight up together down that center seam and you're good to go. All right, so this here is my center wedge and I'm just lining up right sides together with the corner wedge that I just showed you guys sewing on camera here. And I've already got my other bit uh, sewed to it. So this is actually going to complete one entire half. I normally don't sew this entire, this much of a big thing on camera because this is a small space that I'm working in and it's a little challenging, but we're gonna make it work so you guys can see how this works. All right, so I'm gonna start way over here. I'm gonna go ahead and line up those corners and I've got a nice dog ear here and then I have my point. And so I'm gonna line those up and I'm gonna pin those together. Now you guys know I'm, I'm not a huge fan of pinning, but at this point it really matters because we want all of our hard work to show up really well. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a pin in there. And from here on out, all your seams are gonna match. You can see I've got my big diamond, little diamond, big diamond, little diamond, and it's gonna go that way all the way out. So what I do when I'm working with this is I line them up so that those uh, seams are right on top of each other. And I'm just kind of moving them back and forth until they are right on top of each other, just like that. And then I'm gonna put a pin in following that seam line. So it's kind of going at an angle and I'm gonna do that all the way down. Now I made my way all the way to the end. So in this one, again, I'm gonna line up the dog ear with the point. So that way they are right on top of each other. All right, so now I'm just gonna sew down this entire seam, pulling pins as I go, just like if it were a normal uh, block, just it's on a diagonal uh, and it's, but it's, it's pretty normal from this point. I know it looks super intimidating. Quilts like this always get lots of oohs and ahs, but when you break it down into its parts, it is pretty simple and you it can do it at home for sure. All right, so I'm not able to fit the whole thing on camera here, but I can definitely kind of show it to you uh, once I've got it now sewn together and pressed. So you can see we have our center wedge here and then we have wedges to the side. So first I sewed one wedge to the center, just like I did, just pinning everything. And then I pressed everything open. Then I sewed the other wedge to the center. And now when it's all done, I'm gonna go ahead and pin the other half to it. And I've just got one easy center seam. So this was super easy, super fast. We didn't have a single Y seam in the whole thing. First, what we did was we sewed these guys together and these guys together. And then we joined our rows to complete a block. Then we sewed everything together in diagonal rows so no Y scenes whatsoever join those rows and then we just join to center and join to center and you're done so it looks super challenging it looks super intimidating when you break it down 
pretty, pretty easy. I wouldn't do it if you're like a brand new beginner because 60 degree triangles and diamonds can be a little bit of a challenge if you've never sewn before. But if you're ready for that next step and you've been sewing for a little while, or you've never given 60 degree diamonds or tri triangles a try, this is a great one to start with. It's because it goes quick, it can be pretty easy once you break it down, and you can wow all your quilting friends. Well, thanks so much for following along. Remember, you can get this quilt kit while supplies last over at shop.quiltedictsanonymous.com. The best way to ensure that you get fabric is to go over to shop.quiltedictsanonymous.com and join our subscription club, Stashing with Stephanie. Uh, this fabric has already been mailed out. You guys should be getting it if you're a member of the club about the time that this video is coming out. So you can get the finishing kits and you guys get first dibs on that. And then uh, it's, it's made available to the rest of you guys to get some goodies. And then the other really cool thing that we have is I've got a new book, Fat Quarter Workshop. So in Fat Quarter Workshop, this is a collection of our top 10 most popular patterns from the Stash and with Stephanie Club. They are now only available in the book. It is just really a pretty quilt book. It's got lots of really fun designs in it. Lots of fun stuff that you can do with your Fat Quarter bundles. I know they're really fun to collect and then you're not quite sure what to do with them after all the time. Um, there are already tutorials for all of them except for Mariposa that is going to be coming up either right before Christmas or right after Thanksgiving. We'll just have to see how I can work that into the video schedule. Um, so we will see how that works out. But uh, it's really a, it's a fun book. It is been at the number one spot in the Amazon bestsellers for quilts and quilting for about a week, which I, I can't believe that I am saying that because that is just insane like to think that I would ever have a book that would be like in the top 10 would just be insane and the fact that it's been hanging around in the number one spot it goes up and down a little bit but it's been in the number one the last time I checked uh, for over a week it's just it's nuts and I'm so glad that you guys like it but if you order from us then we'll I'll sign it for you and I'll personalize it make great gifts for the holidays it's only I think $14.99 should say on the back yep it's $14.99 in the US so 12 patterns $14.99 great deal Sign up for Stash with Stephanie, get free patterns every month, plus some great deals on fabric. And until next time, happy quilting. Cameo.